Hello, viewers. Thank you for joining this episode. And we are back with Rachid Gurl with a new topic. So before we start, let me just thank you for showing um, interest in this particular channel and also in this playlist. And I would request you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications of our upcoming videos. So Rachid, hello and welcome to this uh, episode. Hi, Parish. Hello, viewers. Thank you for having me. All right. So, Rajat, my question for today is not for technical people, but for functional consultants and for people who are from non-technical backgrounds. So, I would really appreciate if you can uh, explain uh, the question that I'm going to ask in a very layman language. So, we hear the term OData and REST APIs. Now, what are OData and REST APIs and how they are used in context of Dynamics 365 finance and operations? So, if you can explain that in layman terms, it would be really great. Sure, Parish. I will try to keep it simple and without going into too many technical details, uh, I will try to explain these concepts. So before we come to OData, there are a few things which we need to understand. So first thing we need to understand is what is an API. So the term API stands for Application Programming Interface. Now this means a system has exposed a touch point for external applications to come and talk to it. So let me give you a very simple example. When you go to watch a movie, you go to a ticket counter to buy tickets, right? So that ticket counter is like a touch point in that big movie theater where people can come and buy tickets. Similarly, in terms of applications and softwares, um, for example, there could be a logistics software which is exposing an API for external systems to check the uh, shipment status. So an external system can call an API with a tracking number and the response will be the status of that shipment. So that is the concept of API. It's like a touch point for external systems, right? Now, when it comes to exposing API, there are various standards and protocols. And the two most commonly and widely used protocols are SOAP-based and REST-based. SOAP stands for Simple Object Application Protocol and REST stands for RESTful APIs. Now, on a very high level, the difference between SOAP and REST is that REST is based on HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is lightweight. It supports various formats like XML, JSON, uh, YAML, and it is fast. However, SOAP is uh, transport independent, so it's not just HTTP, and it supports XML, but it has a very robust error handling. So both of these SOAP and REST-based API protocols are widely used, widely accepted, but they both have their own pros and cons. So OData, now we come to OData. <laughs> So OData is uh, open data protocol. Now this OData is not a concept of Microsoft technology or IBM or Oracle. It's a protocol which is governed by a not-for-profit body which is called as OASIS. So OData is a protocol which defines a standard ways of exchanging data between systems and exposing your data. So, and this OData is based on RESTful APIs. So that means it is uh, it supports HTTP protocol. So if I have to summarize the definition of OData, it's a protocol which is used to uh, exchange data, expose data, and also do some CRUD operations. For example, the CRUD operations are create, read, update, and delete. Now their counterpart in OData world are, so for create, we call post method. For update, we call put method. For uh, delete, we call delete. And for read, we get we call the get method. So these four methods, get, post, put, and delete, are the terms used in OData you know, uh, landscape when we talk about calling these CRUD operations. So I hope that explains the viewers uh, on a very simple term. What is OData? What is the RESTful API? And what are the various type of OData methods which can be used to perform CRUD operations? And there are like more capabilities in OData when 
uh, you query data, you can use some filter conditions to get more granular results. Now let me just touch base upon how this all is available in finance and operations platform. So uh, as uh, we know Paresh that uh, finance and operations is a ERP application and it has thousands of tables and these are highly normalized. So for example, your customer data is stored in 10 different tables, but in order to expose your customer data to external applications, we need a flat view. And that flat view in Dynamics 365 FNO is called a data entity. And now these data entities, you consider them as a updatable view. So these data entities are exposed as RESTful APIs via data management platform. So the data management platform is the integration framework within FNO which exposes the data entities uh, to outside world and they can be consumed as RESTful APIs using OData protocol. Now, when it comes to data entities which are exposed via, you know, as OData APIs, so they are specifically called as public data entities in Dynamics. So not all the entities are exposed, uh, but all the public data entities are exposed via finance and operations platform. So I hope that gives uh, the uh, high level, simple layman term description of OData uh, and FNO Parish. Thank you very much, Rachet. I really uh, understood the concept uh, for me as a non-technical person. So as I can understand, API as are nothing but an access point or a touch point where OData is a set of protocols which also involves code operations that is create, delete, read and update. And obviously your uh, entities in your FinOps are exposed as uh, RESTful APIs which can be consumed through OData. So if I can understand that, I'm pretty sure um, our viewers can also understand that. So thank you very much, uh, Rachit. So for our viewers, we'll be back with another topic very soon. Thank you all. Thank you, Parish. Thank you, viewers. And do hit the like button. Yeah.